my gosh, I'm so excited to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. How long has it been? Um, I don't even know. So I came home right before my birthday at the end of July mm -hmm. from Costa Rica. Yeah. And you, you were still there and it's just October now. So it's only been less than three months. It feels longer, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does and it doesn't. Like, I don't know. Time just sort of works like that. Like, it, I don't know. It just feels such a short amount of time. But then also, like, the amount of things I've done in between just makes it longer. I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think so, too. I feel like it's a long time ago that I was in Costa Rica. But thinking back, calendar days-wise, it really wasn't that long ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not too long. But you've done quite a lot of things since then. I know you stayed over there when I came home. And so can you tell us, I know you went to, you started from the southern part of South America, right? And then you worked your way up. So what made you go on your whole Latin America trip to begin with and why you picked certain places and how was that whole thing? Yeah, well, I mean, I I didn't, I wanted to do like all of South America, but I, I couldn't because of COVID. Um, so I went to Costa Rica first and then went to Peru and then went back to Costa Rica mm -hmm. and then went to Mexico. But my, like my original plan was just to go to, well, go to Peru and then see where I go from there. And I think I've just, I don't know why I've just always wanted to go to Peru. Like, I don't know. I think it's because like, like, I'm into biology and I'm into, like, nature and that. And, like, I don't know. It just, it, it was one of them countries to me that seemed, like, crazy to go there. Like, go to the Amazon rainforest. And it just seemed mad. And I never thought I'd be able to do it because it just seems mad. But then, like, you just can. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, this day and age, you just can travel and see places. But yeah, I don't know. That was the main reason for it. But I've just, I've always wanted to travel. I've always wanted to travel whilst I'm young as well and just do it rather than, because there's just a lot, I just see a lot of people just be like, yeah, I'll travel after this. I'll do this first and then I'll travel, whatever. And like, I don't know. I've just wanted to get at it, basically. Right, exactly. And you might never get to that point where you want you say you want to go somewhere but then when do you actually go so exactly you took your chance and you just did it before you got yeah. old and busy with life and everything else. exactly <laughs> and like I also did it in like a gap year before uni because I know that I'm going to come out of uni in a massive debt I'm going to need a job and like yeah oh my yeah. goodness yeah so Peru sounds awesome. My favorite Disney movie is The Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> Have I've you never watched that seen one? that. Never no. seen it. No. You need to watch it. It's the really? one. Yeah, it's it has llamas and it's the one where the king. Really? What? Yeah, the I've Emperor. I've never heard of that. <laughs> you need to yeah. watch it. Yeah, really? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, okay. I don't think we. I think we talked about this back at the volunteer center. I think you was it you or someone else that hasn't seen Mulan. Oh yeah, I've not seen that either. <laughs> I've not seen a lot of them. I don't know. I'm yeah. not. Are they, are they? Is it a musical? Well, all Disney movies kind of have songs. Yeah, that's, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I not remember really a musical person. Yeah, I remember we were making a big deal because you and some of the other people that were like, "You've never seen Mulan? Like, what are you talking about?" And then, yeah, In New Groove is like my favorite movie, my favorite Disney movie of all time, and it has this emperor from Peru and it's just like mm. these quirky funny antics that he gets into and there's llamas in the movie you you would love it yeah. if you want if you yeah. like Peru you would love okay. it okay <laughs> I'll, I'll give it a go okay cool and then yeah Machu Picchu it's on the top of my and my husband's bucket list like before we even met each other like we both knew we wanted to go to Machu Picchu and we mm. still haven't been able to go yet and I heard that it's not very I guess it's not hopeful that it'll stay around for a long time is that what you heard also because I know you did get to go and so yeah. we were kind of 
like, oh, we better go soon because it's it's historic and it's they're trying to protect it and sustain it as long as possible. But with all the tourists that are going, I think they've started limiting numbers or something like that. I don't know if you learned about that while you were there. To be honest, I, I didn't. I wasn't aware that it was like not going to be around. There was a like when I was walking around, there was a lot of people like working on the site and like filling cracks with like cement and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. It didn't. It didn't seem like it was going to disappear. But like at the same time, it's really, really high up on a mountain, and like I don't know. Like anything could happen to it. It's very exposed. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're mainly lim- limiting numbers at the minute because of corona, I think. But I don't know. Maybe you are right. Okay, I hope, but... I hope I'm wrong. Hopefully what I heard is just something they said at the time, but hopefully it's being preserved well now so that people can go for a long time to come because that's yeah. one of my top places to go to. What would you recommend? Like, did you guys get to hike up there or stay nearby and then... <laughs> Well, we had a very unique experience because, like, obviously, I, I was with Eden, like, my friend that I was traveling with, and, mm-hmm. like, he's the same age as me, both young, both don't have a lot of money, so we just did it as cheap as we could. So, we basically, you have to get, like, a Peruvian person to come in with you as your Sherpa, and so we just got like the cheapest tour guide we could and he was this like smallest man you've ever seen he had like a walking stick even though he was like I don't know not not old it wasn't like he was an old man like he'd like hurt his leg in a motorbike accident or something like that like he literally we got in there and he was just like just go like he didn't know anything about it (laughs) what is it called a Sherpa I think it is a Sherpa yeah it's basically just someone, I think Sherpa's supposed to be like, you know, them people that walk up a mountain with you and then they have like the tents and they like pretty much just do everything for you and you're just, they're like the tour guide, but bring okay. the tents and the food and stuff like that as well. Okay, but um, the guy that you found was not legit. <laughs> not really, but he was cheap. Like we got, we did like a two day match peachy thing for like a hundred dollars whereas like i met loads of other people that spent like over five hundred dollars so yeah like wow. i don't regret going with them like it would have been cool to be able to learn more about it from an actual tour guide but like yeah i I don't regret it like we we got to see it and that's all that mattered really and then what else did you get to do in peru i mean i worked at another animal shelter there that was pretty cool right there for a month it was very different to the one that we worked at because it was like me and my friends were the only people there um and so like it was a lot more work because we were the only ones there well the only volunteers there and like I don't know there was just a lot less to do it was a different sort of vibe it was raining quite a lot but it was a good experience so they had less animals than the one that Uh, we were at maybe but they still had quite a lot of animals they just had a lot of they had a lot of monkeys a lot of howler monkeys yeah do you remember pretty cool do you remember the name of it that way if anyone's listening they want to go help out since it sounds like they need more volunteers (laughs) yeah i think it's just called amazon shelter amazon shelter what city in peru it's in, it's called Puerto Maldonado. Puerto <laughs> um, Maldonado, okay. <laughs> yeah. If you find I'll, their... I'll, I can give you the information about it. Yeah, if you um, find it later, we can always tag to it on Instagram or something. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then you stayed at Cusco, right? Yeah, so that was a cool experience as well. We, we only were going to stay in Cusco for a week to do like all the tourist stuff, but we ended up getting a job at a hostel or like a volunteer job sort of thing and work there for a month. There's not a lot more to say about that. That was just partying like all the time. Yeah. Partying all the time? Yeah, because basically it was like, it was the only place in like, at least Cusco, but like maybe even all of Peru that was like actually open all night because they had like a lot of restrictions on. So 
we just we just like went up all night because all the locals came, all the tourists came, and so we were just like the night staff. <laughs> we just woke up at like five in the afternoon and then went to sleep at like seven in the morning. But I really liked working there to be honest with you. Like that was probably one of my favourite things that I've done is working in a hostel because I love hostels because you meet so many different people. But if you work in the hostel, like you, you have a reason to talk to everybody. Like even if you're very confident, you talk to most people. There's still a few people that you won't talk to. But mm-hmm. if you work at the hostel, then you literally talk to everyone, and it's good. I like it. That's a good tip. For people that are trying to do cheap yeah. solo travel and yeah. not really spend too yeah. much money, they can volunteer at a hostel and then get to meet all these interesting people. Do you remember some of the, I guess, most exciting or interesting things you heard from people while you were working there? You were there for a whole month, so that was quite a lot of time. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to say, really. Just, just before I forget, just because you said that's a good, like, that's good advice, there's also an app called work away i've not actually used it but so many people told me about it Hmm. and it's i think you get a subscription and it's a in pounds it's like 40 pounds so it's about 50 dollars a year but you you get like access to all of these different workaways which is like volunteering in a hostel So, so if you work in the hostel then you'll get free accommodation sometimes you get free food and yeah like I I wish that I'd known that before I started traveling but I know for the future now yeah that's really cool that kind of reminds me of the animal sanctuary that we volunteered at Mm. how did you find out about about them well to be honest with you I shouldn't have gone through this company because they charged me more than I should have paid but like Mm. it's a company called global work and travel Mm. and to be honest like there's parts of me that I am glad that I managed to do like I did go through them because but solely because of the whole the world situation right now like Mm -hmm. if it wasn't for them getting me like the the right letters to be able to get into the country then like I wouldn't have been able to go and like they were good about that they did help me out a lot or don't know I just I like I paid way too much for it pretty much okay Um, I see yeah I went through something similar but my program was called Go Eco and they're mm -hmm. also all over the world they're in Africa Asia everywhere and Mm -hmm. I know that people could have I guess contacted these shelters personally to to plan their arrangements and live there and pay a fee and whatever yeah but I also went through another company and that's honestly how I even found out about them. I wouldn't even have known yeah. the name yeah, of the shelter true. or where they were yeah. <laughs> if I was to try to do this yeah. on my own. So I am glad I went through them and they did help me with the, yeah, like the COVID you have to do like a pre-screen health screen and all that before you yeah. get into the country and all that. So yeah. they were helpful there, but yeah. Yeah, we're just talking because we like already know each other. But for anyone who's listening, it's like just to explain how we met. So we met at this volunteer center at an animal sanctuary in Alajuela, Costa Rica. And then I remember I was there for, I think, a couple of days already. And then you had gotten there and then we just started talking. And then we just learned a little bit about each other and Tell us a little bit about where you're from and where you've lived, if anyone can guess by Sam's accent already, (laughs) and where you currently live and what you're what you're up to. Um, So I'm from it's a place called Hinkley, but it's near to Leicester or how a lot of people like to pronounce it is Leicester. But somewhere you probably know more is Birmingham or Birmingham. Birmingham. Um, Birmingham. <laughs> I remember yeah. you were trying to teach me how to say it, and you were like Birmingham, we said, Birmingham. and I was like Birmingham. <laughs> I was like Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, not Birmingham. 
Bur- I think um, I got it now. Birmingham. 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 There we go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. But I'm currently living in Liverpool for university or college. Liverpool University. That. Yeah. Yeah, I know um, we were talking about this, how you guys call it uni or university. Yeah. And then we call it college. Yeah. So you guys call... Yeah, like I'm trying to use my better lingo to like... <laughs> oh, that's why I said university rather than just uni. Uni, yeah. I'm used to it now, yeah. I guess. But yeah. So for ele- what do you guys call elementary school? Is that like primary school? Yeah. Or, in, I don't know what elementary school is. Oh. I, don't, I don't know the, well, I don't know the age, like, I don't know okay, if that's so like we have, all of it or. Yeah, we have pre-K, which is pre-kindergarten, and then we have kindergarten, which is probably right. like four or five years old, and then elementary is like six years old, and then you're in elementary okay. for five years, and then you're in middle school. And then from middle school, you go to high school. And yeah. then from high school, you go to college, which is uni. So yeah. what's, uh, what is it called for you guys? I know it's all different. So we have nursery. And that's like when you're like a, not a baby baby, but like pretty small. And then, and then we had infants and primary school, which was like, in, like I don't, don't know. Mine was like the same school, but like two different buildings. And like, I don't know, that that was, I think that's the same as, what do you say, kindergarten and elementary. Okay, and then like, middle yeah. school, middle school is high school for us. Mm. And then we have college, which is your high school. Mm-hmm. And then we have uni, which is your college. Oh my gosh. And then yeah. what's, I guess we call it, Master, masters or but yeah yeah we like we have the same sort of label for that sort of thing i think oh, okay it's okay. like masters or like postgraduate yeah something like that or yeah. like a phd okay so the main difference is that college is you guys as high school for us <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but i know a lot of other countries they call it uni too like australia yeah i don't well i if... get confused about the difference between college and uni in America because mm. like, aren't they just the same thing really yeah so we call your college yeah. we call it high school here that's the four years you do before you go to uni which we just call college <laughs> yeah no but I mean like because isn't there like universities and then colleges oh but they're okay. basically the same thing yeah we have some I guess community colleges where there may be only a two year program, but you don't get your full bachelor's degree. And we have mm. other colleges, but we, the four year ones that you're the main ones that people go to are called universities. Uh, okay. But even when we're talking about universities, we just say college. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But I catch myself saying no, uni more now just from speaking to yeah. other people. I say uni now too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, faster. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you are okay, say the name of the city that you were born in again. I don't think I caught it. I was born in somewhere called Nuneaton. What was it? <laughs> Nuneaton. Nuneaton. And then yeah. you lived in Birmingham for a while. And then yeah. now you're in Liverpool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. And what are you studying in uni? Doing biology. So it's just like it's I could have specialized into like a specific type of biology, but I didn't know what sort of biology that I wanted to do. So I just went for biology, yeah. Okay. And how old are you? I don't think I ever asked you, because you had to take a gap year, right? Before college. Yeah, I'm 19. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, yes, I think I remember now. I was like, he's so young. <laughs> Everyone's saying that, yeah. Everyone says it? Like, I, like obviously, I am young. Like, I am 19, but, like, I don't I don't feel young at all. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't yeah. like it when people judge me off of my age. And some people do. 
Yeah. Not no, not think... generally, but yeah. Yeah. I just remember you from like your personality and the things that you were interested in and would talk about and your whole vibe. But yeah, not I don't really look at you as just as yeah. just your age either. I think I started college or university. I think I was I think I was 17 or 18. I was always like one of the younger ones in our in my class. So this is your first yeah. year of uni. You went through a yeah. pandemic, you went and traveled and took a gap year. So how are you adjusting to college life? Are you living? Okay, we call it dorms, dormitories. I don't know what you guys call it. <laughs> we call it halls. Um, halls? Okay. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Don't don't you guys have to share a room? We don't share any rooms here. We get our, our, our whole own room. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, our, I could not dorms. share a room. No, how many people did you share a room in in Costa Rica? Like, there was a lot you. Of people. Actually, was it just the two of you in a room? I mean, yeah, in that dorm, but I I went to a lot of different dorms. I went to like there was like eighteen person dorms, some places, <gasps> like, a lot of people. Wow, just through your other trips that you took in Costa yeah. Rica, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I think the, the dorms they put us in, it was guys, girls separate. And then we had, we had like 12 spaces. We had six bunk beds at our volunteer center, yeah. 12 spaces, but the top back, the top bunk was really not usable because of all the bugs and <laughs> uh, dust that uh, was yeah. on there. And then in my room, it was me, Sian, and then it was us. Oh, and Clemons from France. And it was the three of us for a while. And then when the French people left, we had the Israeli girls, Yael and Jovelle come in. So then they were our new roommates. So luckily we just had the four of us. And then you guys had guys dorms and same situation. And I don't know how many people or who was all in there because there was people coming in to the center like left and right day after yeah. day, just coming and leaving. But I'm happy with my roommates. I'm glad there was only the most of us. The most of the time, there was only four of us <laughs> to that yeah. room, which I'm very thankful of. Because my yeah. my friend Sianna was there. You know her. She might yeah. go to London next year. So you might be able to see her again. She does not do roommates. <laughs> yeah. Like, she tolerates me just because we've roomed before and other things. But she does not do roommates. <laughs> So, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, she was like very worrisome about the whole situation. Like, I don't know who our roommates are going to be. Luckily, it went well for us. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Did yeah. anyone snore? I don't think so. The only thing was my bunk bed was so bad. Like my mattress, I think whoever was there before had flipped it the opposite end. So I think oh. I was sleeping on the back part of the mattress for a while. Oh. <laughs> and I just, Did you flip it over? I eventually had to flip it over because I was yeah. like, this is not right. I don't think this is right. <laughs> and it was so yeah. dusty, at least the top bunk. And then my mattress was super squeaky. So oh, really? every, I felt like I was waking everyone up in my dorm every time I tossed. And I think I did. It was everyone else's mattresses were okay mine was the only one that was super super squeaky yeah, yeah. i think it might have been my bed frame too and then we had the mosquito nets covering <laughs> yeah we did we didn't even get mosquito nets you guys didn't no no, no? i don't know why but wow yeah. i think it was fun in, yeah it was yeah i think in the other girls dorm that i walked into they all had mosquito nets too i want to say so i'm not sure about you guys' room but we all had mosquito it's nets the boys room the boys i guess just didn't care about it yeah yeah <laughs> well no we like i would have very happily taken some mosquito nets but there just wasn't any but oh yeah we came prepared. in our room anyway yeah Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, we came prepared because, again, Go Eco, the agency I went through, they gave us a packing list of things to oh, bring. Really? Some mosquito oh, net, okay. bug spray, anti itch, after bite spray. That was all on there. Yeah. And we used all of it. <laughs> yeah. 
to be honest, by that point, like I was just half the getting bitten thing. Like it mm-hmm. didn't really bother me anymore. Um, yeah, because you were already in South America for a while. Yeah. So yeah, back to the subject. We in America, in our universities, we do have dormitories. I guess you could call them halls. They have names like, like whatever hall like I live in whatever hall I live in this hall but we do have dormitories where there's different levels like it's the amount that you pay for I think usually for freshmen like the first year students you have to share a room and it's usually two they're very tiny they're two people to a room I've seen it on movies they don't look good but no. my room is actually pretty big to be honest with you like, yeah this is probably bigger than my room at home. You want to give us a tour? Um, if you could turn the light on. This is I mean, this is on YouTube, everyone. So just after you listen, go to the YouTube link and you can watch everything on video. It's okay. just like this. Oh, nice. That's my bed. And then, like, yeah. In a closet. It's, like, honestly, it's, it's nothing special at all. It's just... Uh, Oh, that's and, the light problem. And you have a window. <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah, have I've got your a massive own, window. Do you have your own water closet? What? Do you guys call it? Oh, shoot. Okay. my Okay, I know people in Canada call it water closet. So I was like just trying my luck. <laughs> <laughs> what is the water closet? What is that? Like WC water closet? No, okay. Oh, no, a bathroom. A bathroom. <laughs> a bathroom. What do yeah. you guys call it? Yeah, a, ba- a bathroom. No, just toilet. Just, the yeah. toilet? You we guys just, just... Yeah, yeah, we just call it the toilet, really. Okay. I pref- I usually say restroom in America. We yeah. say bathroom or restroom. And then I know the Canadians call it a water closet. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense now that I put it into WC, but like yes. I've never, yeah, I've never considered that. Yeah, in China, the bathroom signs say WC. And then until I learned oh, that, really? now I'm like, oh, that makes sense now. Yeah. Is it not different in China? Do they not have like different symbols? Or do they use WC? They use, they use WC, yeah, in China. Really? Mm-hmm. That's really surprising. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, a lot of China uses British English. Really? Yeah. Oh. Like, hmm. growing up, so I, I did a few, I went to school until I was third grade or like eighth, my eighth year of life in China, and they would teach you English, but it's English English. It's like proper English. Yeah. So the people that oh. learn now it might be different but when i was growing up they taught you proper english so you would say dancing instead of yeah. dancing yeah all oh, right mm-hmm. yeah and you would say thank you <laughs> really thank you oh my gosh i don't know anybody that would say that well how do you say thank you just thank you did you say thank, thank you, you? Okay, I'm okay. I'm working on it. Okay, it's uh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's a hard one for me. But yeah, they would say like dancing and water. <laughs> mm. I really but, want to learn Mandarin. Actually, that's right. We were talking about it. Yeah. Did I teach you any? But I don't really know where to start. I think I taught you a couple words, which you probably already forgot definitely forgotten them 19 year old brain it yeah (laughs) there's just a lot going in and out there's yeah maybe there's a course you can take at your uni for mandarin yeah i was thinking about that because as well the uni has got like a partner shine a partner uni in china so i think that there must be like some society or something like that i don't know like here we call it study abroad where yeah. you take a summer or yeah, a semester yeah. yeah yeah you should do it i do thing is i do want to do that but i was talking to my tutor about it and he said that like you need to be like really smart 
because if you miss a whole semester of your course, then you have to come back and catch up on a whole semester of work because the work that you will have been doing in a different country won't be the exact same like stuff that's on the mm-hmm. course. And I don't like, I really don't know if for me it's worth mm. catching up on a whole semester. Like, I'd probably prefer to just spend my time better and then travel because I, I want to work abroad when I'm older. I know that I'm going to travel more. Like, I know that I'm going to see these different places. It yeah. would be cool to go to uni there, but like, I might. As, as well like he said like even if even if you can catch up on all that work like you're gonna need to learn mandarin as well and it's like i don't i don't know i don't it's know if much. i can do that like i'm already feeling like it's a lot and it's like second week second week of uni yeah what but, about maybe just a summer like my husband did something where he just went to spain for three weeks over the summer yeah. for like one class yeah yeah maybe something like that mm-hmm. i think i can go to like australia or new zealand as well so that might be on the cards mm-hmm. i don't know okay I don't well know. if you could go not for a whole semester but maybe for a couple of weeks or something yeah. to try yeah. that i would highly recommend it yeah and then you'll no, get i do learn. really want to go yeah, yeah. Well, if you need me to learn a word or so here and there, let me know. <laughs> okay. I yeah. Will do. yeah, I've been fortunate that I still remember to speak my Mandarin because I did go to school there for mm. my kindergarten and three years into elementary. So I did have to learn how to write Chinese and read yeah. it and everything. It's very tough. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Is it? oh, it's no. so tough because it's not like a latin language it's not based yeah. off of latin so like french spanish portuguese english italian those are all kind of similar to each other but chinese is just its whole things <laughs> yeah there's really nothing to base it off of mm, brilliant yeah <laughs> i was trying to teach one of my taxi drivers in costa rica a few words in chinese and i'm pretty sure he already forgot it too <laughs> yeah yeah it's hard to learn like honestly the best way to learn a language is just being forced to learn it just being in a situation where everyone else is speaking it and you just have to right exactly did you feel like you learned spanish a bit while you were in peru yeah to be honest i I'd, like I don't know how much I'd say, like, if someone asked me, do, I, do you speak Spanish? I don't know. Like, I feel like I can't be like, yeah, I speak Spanish. But I usually say, like, I can, but it's not perfect. Mm-hmm. Like, I can understand it more or less. And it's it's the same thing. Like, I, to be honest, I did, I taught myself some Spanish before I went traveling just from YouTube and, like, just the basic just help me like yes. because I could recognize things and I could understand where things came from but yeah definitely but then I lost it all again like when I lo- when I left Peru I was like actually quite good I was speaking to everyone in Spanish but then I spent like a month in Costa Rica and no well, with us Americans people there. <laughs> yeah but like just every like even like people from Europe, like pretty much everywhere speaking English, really. Yeah, that's how I felt too before because we spent a few days in San Jose and Costa Rica and the city and other places before we went to the animal center too. So Sian and I, we were at our host family's home and they only spoke Spanish. So I spoke mm. a ton of Spanish. Like I only spoke Spanish with them and we had like hour long conversations. I was like really proud of myself. And then when we got to the center, it was like everyone was from France or from Germany or England, Ireland, Israel. So everyone was speaking English. Yeah. Even Mexico, people were from. So everyone was just using English, basically. I I would try. Like when I got to the center, I started just speaking Spanish. 
And then everyone mm. was replying to me in English. And even the manager there, he was, I was trying to con conversate with him in Spanish and he would reply in, in English. So I'm like, okay, yeah. well, there goes my practicing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel yeah, the same. Like that. And like sometimes it was like I'd try, but like because I'm not fluent and they probably were fluent in English, mm -hmm. sometimes it just wasn't even worth it. Mm -hmm. Like it just took a lot longer and I couldn't say exactly what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. So like it just wasn't worth it. Yeah, I will say that the workers they had the from Nicaragua, the Nicaraguenses, they only spoke Spanish. So the Sian and I would uh, try to speak to them in Spanish. I, yeah. I know. I, I do you remember my first day? I, I do. I, yeah. And I, I arrived and I was made to like carry loads of brick and that that yeah and that was with one of the guys from Nicaragua um, yeah Julio right I think it was sure. Julio yeah he yeah. was like the handy Honestly, man I'm around so bad with names <laughs> so and then we had we had the, our mama Nika from the kitchen so uh, all of the workers we did speak to them in Spanish yeah and yeah I remember they they used you they used you for construction and for manual yeah. labor yeah yeah Oh my gosh, the trees. <laughs> the trees. Until the until yeah. you were voluntold to be on that team, then you got a break from doing all of that. But then you had yeah. to feed squirrels and rec baby raccoons. Yeah. You have to yeah. tell the Charlie bit my finger story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean I feel bad about it though. Okay, well maybe well, but, no, I will tell it. Maybe we won't say the ending. <laughs> I mean, I think people are going to be able to guess the ending Aww. now. And then um, you have to. But and then you, what happened. And then you have to say Charlie bit my finger. So the vet told me to get the other squirrel when we were already letting some of the squirrels out. So I went and grabbed another squirrel from like where they kept, and I didn't know, but it was the wrong one but he wasn't there to tell me that it was the wrong one. So I brought it out and like opened its little cage and then it wasn't coming out. So I like tried to get it to bring it out so that it could run about and stuff. And then it bit me. Charlie bit my finger. He's Yay. happy now. <laughs> Every yes, everyone's happy now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then... Yeah, and then it bit me and then ran up a tree. And then I was told that it only had, was it like three legs or its back, back legs didn't work properly or something like that? Yeah, I think it had then, like maybe mobility issues. Yeah. It was able to climb up the tree okay on its exactly. own. Exactly. It got away from me very quickly as well. And then, and then later on we found out that it fell out of the tree. Mm. Which yeah, is bad. tragic. It happens. Yeah. But it's but nature. Like, it is. It's survival of the fittest. It is. Um, yeah. And you did some. You did some really know. good work. We 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 kept some some animals alive there. Some yeah. really injured or born with defects animals giving them a yeah. second chance so don't feel yeah. bad i won't how's your finger now is it healed yeah 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 it wasn't a, it wasn't a big cut okay it's just a little prick yeah you had like yeah. bandages around <laughs> it been everywhere. that's what always happens like i'll get a wound and it won't really hurt but it's just like blood everywhere oh so. gosh <laughs> Speaking of blood, you get tattoos in every country you go to, is what you mm -hmm. told me. Are you still doing uh, that? I, I've kind of ruined that because, so you don't know this, on my way home, so I was in Mexico and Mexico got added to the red list for England. So that means if you fly straight home from Mexico or haven't been to anywhere else and stayed ten, like 10 days anywhere else, then you have to like pay for this government hotel 
which is like two thousand pounds for like two weeks. It's a lot of money, and like I couldn't afford it. So instead, I went to Austria, which was a green list country, which meant I didn't have to quarantine when I got back to England. Austria, like Austria, wasn't a good time really, to be honest, because I had to quarantine for ten days when I was there. So I had a flight booked for the tenth day. And also, there's the ad. There's this little added bit that I left my phone in the taxi. Oh um, no! So I then did. Well, I think I did like probably like eight or nine days in quarantine. Um, and like without a phone, literally nothing to do. And then tested positive for COVID. <gasps> yeah, and then had to do another ten days. So I basically did 20 days in a room without my phone. Like the the one thing that kept me going was drawing. I did a lot of drawing, but yeah, that wasn't good. But because of that, I couldn't get a tattoo in Austria. But I didn't really want one in Austria. Like the tattoo you didn't, was a like, good You memory. weren't supposed to go there to begin yeah, with. Yeah, true. True. But it would have still been cool. I don't know. You just couldn't um, go anywhere because you were in quarantine. Yeah. And I, I tried to go somewhere. So on like the, it was like the day before I actually got my flight, I got my negative COVID test back and I tried to go, what's it called? Vienna. Mm-hmm. I tried to go into Vienna because I was staying like in a town just outside. And I literally waited at this train station for like two hours and none of the trains stopped none of them and i bought a ticket but they just didn't stop i I was was like because i didn't know what train i was supposed to get onto either because everything is in german and i don't speak any german so i was just thinking like i'm just the next train that stops i'm just going to get onto it and just go none of them stopped i don't understand it were there other people waiting at the get the train no, station? No. So you were the only one. You couldn't really yeah. ask for help. There was no one there. I got my ticket from a machine. So oh man. I don't know. Well, but yeah. But guess... apart from that, I've got a lot of very nice tattoos from a lot of very nice places and a lot of good memories. Yeah. Which one did you get in Costa Rica? I got two actually got the knife well it's supposed to be a machete machete yes like knife. and then also the snake let me see oh oh yeah that's right cool it like wraps all the way around yeah that looks cool and then in peru did you get a llama uh, peru i got two again i got this bird it's quite hard to show this one actually because it's like on the underside yeah. of my Maybe arm a- Maybe open your window for more light. See if that works. Okay, let's see, everybody. Bear with us. Okay, do you see it? Yes. Is that better? Yeah, it's like an eagle, okay. right? With like Aztec designs. Incan. Incan. Yeah, Incan. There you go. Incan. Yeah. Condor. Um, cool. And that's just I really like that one. I really liked it. Yeah. I was saying, like, it was one of, it's actually the tattoo that I've had the least thought about. Like, I just saw it and I was like, yeah, that one. Yes. But this one, this got a cool story. This is a bullet ant. Bullet ant, um, yeah. And that's because me and my friend like went out to try and find one and we got them and put put them on ourselves and got stung by them. <gasps> it wasn't that bad. No. I was quite disappointed, yeah. Yeah. I like I'd always been told that it was like the worst pain in the world. I thought it was supposed to be like a bullet, but to be honest, tattoos hurt more than bullet ants. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, now yeah. we know. Yeah, because yeah. I think there was one crawling on my leg, and I think one of the workers saw, and he's like, like swatted it away. He's like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. So luckily, I didn't get stung. But yeah, you're crazy for volunteering to be stung by a bullet ant. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just an experience, like. I was there and like they do they do like the tribal initiative I think it's when they 
get married to prove that they're a man they have to wear a glove filled with bullets which would obviously be a lot worse oh, it's a whole glove. but that's the thing that result one one fine so and it oh was oh my gosh well that's cool and then did you get one in mexico but yeah yeah that's my newest one it's quite hard to show this one properly mm -hmm. even like in person oh but so this here that is intricate this, like this blue bit it's supposed to be like like you know an actual biological heart that has like the veins coming out of it mm -hmm. it's it's that but made out of water mm -hmm. like made out of waves and that i mean that's got a cool story and a cool meaning it's basically the the person that did that one did the first tattoo that I got when I was traveling, did this one in Costa Rica. And then I met up with him again in Mexico. And because I knew he was so good, he like, he's done like my friend's whole forearm. So I knew he was like really good at color. So I got him to do this and it's a massive piece and he did really well. But the meaning is uh, from, well, not his book his daughter wrote it but it's bruce lee's philosophy and it's called the book is called be water my friends and it's just about i mean I, i'd recommend it to anyone i think it's an amazing book it's it's just the philosophy about being like water really like water can give life it can take life it can be like it can fill any like thing that you put it into mm -hmm. so it takes the shape of its container it can be hard it can be soft cold hot like there's a lot of different things that you can do with that one like simple analogy and yeah. i like it it's when you flow like water and adapt to any condition exactly okay i wrote that down i'll read it do it <laughs> i actually, i listened to the audiobook actually but oh and it's by the it's author good. it's uh, read by the author yeah, it's, uh, no it's it's written by his daughter mm -hmm. because i didn't actually know this bruce lee died when he was like in his 30s oh. i think he'd like he died really suddenly and like out of nowhere really okay yeah. and then the yeah. daughter read the audiobook i don't know i don't know who read it oh, okay i like i like listening to audiobooks when the author writes them yeah yeah or when the author Read some. Read some, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, thanks for showing us and the people watching on YouTube your tattoos. I enjoy all the stories and hope that you'll get more in every country that you go to. Hopefully, COVID doesn't I come hope I will. in between that in the future. <laughs> yeah. I actually want to get into tattooing. I'm going to dedicate a whole leg and just <laughs> do it on myself, really. For um, your canvas. I'm going to start. Yeah, like it's like a little catalogue as well. Like if anyone wants a tattoo, I'll just be like look at my leg, pick one. <laughs> this is know. my work. Choose one that you would like. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, you have to keep us updated on that then. <laughs> I will do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about learning a new skill or a new hobby. So Yeah. Yeah. So I know you wanted to talk about biology a little bit because you're passionate about mm -hmm. it and that's what you're studying in school. So enlighten yeah. us. So something that like not I've not been I've not known about this for that long, but like within the past year probably, I've learned about the potential for artificial photosynthesis. So what I mean by that is you know what photosynthesis is where yes. it's essentially just plants they take carbon dioxide water and sunlight and they make glucose just like food mm -hmm. and oxygen you can also rewire that so that it doesn't make glucose it doesn't make food but it makes electricity it makes something that's similar to petrol like you can make a lot of different things out of it and essentially, once we have the capability to build a machine that can effectively do that, 
but probably in a very efficient manner, then we can we can solve problems. For example, we can take so much carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and use it to make food and oxygen and electricity. And in principle, it's all all free as well. The the only one thing that we would start to run out of is water. Like not run out of it, but like you need fresh water for it. Mm. So I don't know if this is a thing that I can imagine water prices increasing as we go into the future. But like I've been interested in it for a while, but then I also saw that it's what Elon Musk is hoping of doing on Mars. Mm. Um, because Mars has a really dense carbon dioxide atmosphere and it has like ice deposits. So yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just like, I think it's the next step in human evolution kind of because it it's i don't know it's kind of like a godly power like just being able to take these elements and make anything we need out of it essentially right like redirect that energy process to get a different production yeah with but you have to use plants uh not necessarily no no, I think I think eventually they'll be able to build a machine that can actually do it. But something that I'm also interested in is like potentially like genetic modification so that certain plants are more efficient in photosynthesis. So that means that you could have like a forest that's the same size as a separate forest, but it's more efficient and therefore stores more CO2 from the atmosphere. So overall, like it would just be better for the environment. Oh, okay. So genetically modifying trees? Literally anything, literally any plants, because they take the carbon dioxide in and store it as carbon. So, yeah. Would you start with new plants or can you affect that in current forests that exist? See, this is this where it's hard because you have to be careful with it because if you create a really like advanced species, then it would outcompete all the other species and throw it all off. So you do need to be careful with it. But like at least for now I'm interested in like looking into these sort of things in like a controlled lab environment where there's no chance of it spreading to the actual environment itself. That's true. I appreciate that for being careful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. So it's barely your second work week in uni and you have all these ideas and interests already. So it's good to hear that you're in the right field of biology and all these futuristic things that biology can advance to. It's not just about the study of organisms, yeah. but maybe future human sustainability and environmental yeah. protection and artificial photosynthesis i've never heard of that one before yeah no honestly i think i think we're all gonna start hearing about it a lot more yeah but like there's just there's so many pretty much all the problems that we have in the world can be solved by using biology well at mm. least a lot of them like for me one of the biggest things that jumps out to me is like world hunger you can pretty much solve that with biology mm-hmm. um that's something else that i'm interested in like going into sustainable food and agriculture and stuff like that um fungi the stud uh like mycology i find that really interesting i think that's gonna take some big leaps in the future but yeah yeah, fungi don't get enough credit for all they do. Yeah, they don't. They don't. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, um, that's that's awesome. It sounds like you're really passionate about it. And as long as everything is in a controlled lab environment, hopefully people keep it that way for now until they can get the tests going. And just we don't want to mess up the earth more than it already is. So hopefully yeah. it's first do no harm and then we can try to improve it 
I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you like the podcast, please leave me a five star review on iTunes. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and Facebook at MFMPPod. And to keep the conversation going, you can use the hashtag MFMPPod on Twitter to share your favorite quotes and memes or comments about the podcast, as well as any questions you have for me that I can potentially answer on future episodes. Or you can always DM me on Instagram as well. And consider supporting the show by visiting patreon.com slash many faces many places. Until then, I hope you will stay tuned as we hear more from the many faces of many places.